So a Chinese looking visa officer has been actually denying a lot of Indian visas. When you go ahead to the consulate and you're facing that Chinese VO, I want you to be very, very careful. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about how to be careful. In fact, we're going to be covering five major questions of importance over here. First off, who is this infamous Chinese VO? Secondly, what are his top asked questions? Third, how is he rejecting the applicants? What is his methodology? Fourth is how do you avoid getting rejected by this Chinese VO if you face him? And fifth is if you've already been rejected by this person and you've received a 214B, how do you actually go ahead and turn that around? How do you come back from that? So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's actually get started and explain exactly who this person is. So this Chinese VO is actually someone who is very, very infamous. If you go ahead, check out on the groups, you'll find that people have various instances listed out about his, you know, short interview that he's taking. And on top of that, he will reject you without any basis, really, without even asking you any questions for the most part. Even if he's asking you most questions, he's not going to be properly listening to you. And he's going to be rejecting you without even actually understanding who you are, what your case is. The rejection over here is always 214B, which looks very, very bad on your application. And the next time you apply, it basically almost guarantees that you will not be approved in most cases. Of course, it's not impossible to come back from a 214B. We have had people that we have worked with and you know, 214Bs have been overcome. But at the same point of time, it's not as easy as well. It is a critical case. And if he's putting you in that position, you should be very, very careful. At present, mostly he is being found at the New Delhi consulate. Sometimes last year, I believe he was in the Kolkata consulate. I'm not quite sure if he moves around or I'm not quite sure how these things work with US travel docs, but this is currently how it is. Let's move on to the question number two, which is what are his top asked questions? What does he ask the applicants? Before that, I want to give you a demonstration so that you understand exactly what goes on. Good morning, which university are you going for? Officer, I'm going for Columbia University and I'm going for the Masters in Finance program. And why are you applying to Columbia? Officer, I personally feel that Columbia has one of the best curriculums in the world for a master's in finance program. On top of that, I know that Professor XYZ and who is going to be sponsoring your education, please. So officer, I've taken a loan from the bank and on top of that, my father will be sponsoring my education with some of his savings as well. What is your father's occupation? Sir, my father is actually a government agent. He works with the MCD. That's the Municipal Corporation of Delhi. Okay. At present, you seem to be ineligible for this visa. Please take the slip and you can apply again later. So as you can see, he interrupts you. He's basically asking questions without really wanting to hear the answers. And on top of that, what he's going to do is almost always he will come out with some 214B. You know, the 214B rejection means that you have not shown enough home ties. He didn't even ask you about your home ties for the most part. Right. And that's the crazy idea. He's basically maybe extrapolating things or whatever he's doing, or he's just in the mindset that, you know, hey, look, I have the 100% authority over here. And if I want to reject people, I'll continuously keep rejecting them. In fact, I know that most people who go to this counter do not get accepted at all. I haven't been able to find even a single accept. I know that there must be some of you guys who are going to probably the top most universities and I want you guys to comment down below what your experience was. But I also want to hear the experiences of people who have really gone through this process and have been rejected. Please let me know in the comments down below because for the most part, he's not listening to reason. By the way, his top asked questions are right over here on your screen. Why are you studying this program at this particular university? Then why not study in India? And of course, sponsor and finance related questions as you could see in my interview as well. So question number three, how does he reject the applicants? He would basically interrupt the applicants. He would not listen to the answers. For the most part, his questions would not make sense. And at the end of the day, he would just type on his keyboard a little bit of something. For some reason, I'm not quite sure what reason he gives the US travel docs people. Of course, these VOs, they have to give the reason to the CGI federal or the US travel docs people, right? That this is why I'm rejecting this visa. He writes down some reason and then straight away, the next thing you'll hear from his mouth is please take this slip and you are rejected. Point number four, how do you avoid getting rejected by this Chinese VO? Well, in that case, first off, you have to be really, really strong with your answers. Try to make them as strong as possible. Practice a lot for the 
actual visa interview. In fact, if you need one-on-one -on -one guidance and we can actually help you with that as well, you can take a look at the F1 visa mock interview service on Wiamgrad, which we offer so that we can directly train you for this interview. But sometimes even after being very well trained, what will happen is that he will just not listen to your answers. He will just not even ask you the questions. For the most part, he may just ask you why this university, he may interrupt you and he may just give you a 2 on 4 b And even those instances have happened and we have seen some, some such instances on groups. We have seen some such instances happen with people that we know as well. So is training for the interview the best resort? No, but it's a really good place to start. The next thing you need to understand is it is somehow a game of luck as well, all right? You cannot simply imagine that if you are in the line, it's an, almost an infinite line, so many people who are standing in the line, right? And you have to go through the, you know, outer part of the consulate to the inner part. You do not know which person will get which kind of a visa officer. So really, at, time, at a time, it happens that you're in front of the line, and everyone in front of you is at a counter, you know, there are so many counters, everyone is having their interviews. As soon as someone's interview finishes, you have to go over there to the VO which is available. That's generally how it works. So if the Chinese VO just rejected someone and now you are the person who is next in line and he's free now, he can take another applicant to reject, of course, you have to go to him. So for the most part, you won't really have a lot of choice over there. So my advice is to keep your answers crisp and short. Do not get rejected. If you see this video, try to give your answers within 10, 15 seconds, not, not more than that for any question at all. Keep them very strong. Mention the main and the biggest reason for whatever answer you're giving, and that should be about it. But on top of that, I want you to understand if you do get rejected by this visa officer, it is probably not your fault because these officers have almost 100% authority on what they are doing. I'm not quite sure if US Travel Docs checks their answers or why they have rejected a particular visa or why they have approved it. But at the same point of time, it is very important for you to understand that you have to give your very best in the interview. In fact, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below what has worked for the people who got it approved from, from this Chinese view. I know most of you guys know what I'm talking about. Please let us know in the comments how did you get through so that we can actually help spread this information so that you guys can benefit at the end of the day. Finally, point number five, what do you do if you do get rejected by him? In most cases, you will have the pink slip or the 214B slip. That means that your intent to come back to your own country. In most cases, mostly Indians are going to be watching this. So your intent to come back to India is not good enough. That means you're not going to come back. This is what the officer thinks. The next time you actually apply for the visa again, the officer will actually have this skepticism. Why were you rejected for this last time? In that case, you have to mention that I am not sure why my visa was rejected. It happened very fast and I could not make anything out of it. I would like you to please conduct a new interview for me. All right, whenever you face the new visa officer. All right, so you can say something like that or you can mention something like, okay, I was stuttering for the most part and maybe that is why it may have happened. Don't give them the actual reason. Don't tell them that it was the Chinese VO. That's, <laughs> that's a bad move. Don't do that. But again, it's important for you to understand how to come back from this. And 214B cases, very, very critical. You probably want to take a look with a specialist who has been working with visas. Again, it's a very critical case because 214Bs, if you get more one or two of them after that, it basically does not end. The cycle does not end so easily over there. Apart from that, when you're doing everything you can, please go ahead, post on the YMGrad discussions, go ahead, discuss this topic. It is very important. Or even in the comments down below, mention how to get this approved for the people who have actually got, gotten it approved. It is very important because this thing cannot keep going on for you guys right doesn't make sense first off getting an appointment is very difficult and if you do get one and you get rejected because of this baseless reason it doesn't make sense getting another appointment would basically mean deferring for the most part if you know what I mean I'm going to be taking off for now for further updates please make sure to subscribe to the channel and you can follow me on Instagram for really really quick updates I'll see you in the next one goodbye for now.